boy. 649-923-K, Rocky W.I.S.B. It's good to wake up the comedians, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They're always so alert. Lisbon, Peru. But, uh, no, he's great. Richard Lewis. Yeah. And uh, we'll be hearing from other celebrities welcoming us into Washington because they're so excited that we're uh, going to be in Washington. They can promote and plug more things now. That's right. It's a, it's a better plug than it was before. Right. Now they've got three million people to hit at least <laughs> every morning. All right, we'll be back right after... Oh, excuse me. Wow. Here's a spot for New York and Washington and Philly goes away. Oh, my goodness. You know, things are getting real complicated. <laughs> 94 WISP is throwing another Friday Night Live party starting at 6 this Friday live from the Chestnut Cabaret. I'm David Dye. It's a rock and roll party every Friday. And we're just on a... I know what. <laughs> hey, anyway, Jessica Hahn, of course, you know, it used to be that the Bible Bell was a... It was a real score when we had her on the air, but she does yeah, interviews she, with we everybody. we were the only one she really talked to yeah. Excuse as me? herself. But now she talks to Richard Bay, and I'm sure there's Washington DJs you talk to. Uh, no, I haven't talked to anybody that I know from Washington. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, Howard. What are you right. talking about? All right, it's just You're that, like uh, number one, all right? By the way, Jessica Hahn, the star of the new Sam Kinison video yeah, that'll be coming out. Yeah, wild thing. When is that coming out, do you know? Um, it's supposed to be out any day now. And, you know... Have you seen it? I haven't. I'm dying to see it. No, did you I go to L.A. this weekend? Mm, didn't have a chance. I almost did. You didn't fly to L.A. to see your boyfriend, Sam Kinison? <laughs> oh, great stand Is Sam calling in to uh, welcome us to Washington, Gary? No, he was a little bit more difficult to get a hold of. Oh. <laughs> well, I could try and get him for you. Yeah, why don't you get a hold of him and have him... Uh, you <laughs> could get a hold of him, Jessica, since you are his, uh, may I say, bedmate? No, he's squeeze. Let's say squeeze. He's squeeze. You are Robin. his lover. My God, Rob. You are Sam's what? lover. And, and by the way, Sam, so, so the people in Washington know, we introduced Jessica to Sam. This is our romance. This is right. Stuff. This is something that we germinated. Yeah, when you guys came into California, yeah. That's right. The damage you caused. Robin took you out to a comedy club that night. Yeah, and yeah. what we put together, let no man put asunder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And ever since we then... We are just full of lines. And ever since then, uh, Sam's been nailing Jessica uh, yeah. like a... Yeah. Like a happy, Like too. a carpenter with a ball-peen hammer. That's right. I think he's much heavier. <laughs> I didn't say that, okay? Well, I guess you have said that. So I renewed my contract. Do you care? Oh, great! Oh, with your Phoenix radio station yeah. for another month? What is that, a monthly renewal? No. Why do you go for a year? It's like my rent. You know, no. I renewed it until the end of the year. Oh, great. Oh, good. So, okay. see what happens. So, who did that for you? Did you get an agent? No, I've been doing it all on my own. You went and negotiated for yourself? Yeah, I've been doing good. Oh, boy. What? Oh, boy. I just wonder how good you really are doing for yourself. <laughs> We're back to step one, aren't we? <laughs> you know, Jackie. Like, it's day. like Jackie Martling represents himself in negotiations. Aww. He makes less money than Gary. <laughs> <laughs> his, his salary keeps going down. It as does. A matter of no, I'm I, telling you, people who represent themselves in this business just don't go anywhere. No, this is a really, really... Re you'd be proud of me, Howard. Really? Yeah, you would. This reminds me of the first day we talked. Mm. Remember you tried to save me? And yeah, well, I keep... all the people calling? And remember you didn't listen to me? <laughs> yeah. No. Remember that. Remember all that? But I've listened to you ever since. Mm. And you haven't been wrong. Well. Yeah, well. So anyway, uh... What? <laughs> I want to thank you for welcoming us to Washington. You know what I did this weekend, Robin? What did you do? I went on a panty raid at Hofstra, uh, some college girls. <laughs> what? I've been mean, hanging around colleges. Oh, boy. What Actually, are you talking about? <laughs> are you out of your mind? <laughs> Robin, me and a bunch of guys went over to Hofstra and went over to the dorms and just started, like, panty raiding and you stuff. You know, I, thought that used to, I used to think it was kids from other dorms. That's no. fathers? It's 34-year-old <laughs> sexually frustrated men. <laughs> We just wanted to take girls' panties oh off. Oh, my goodness. I went over to the local the local university and... Uh, yeah? No, I actually, um, actually went over to Hofstra to see my cousin play football. Uh -huh. He doesn't play for Hofstra. He plays for University of Buffalo. Howard, you went out? Yeah, I actually went out. Oh, and, it was uh, daylight, though. Oh, I forgot. That's <laughs> <true>. <laughs> my God. At night, it's dangerous. That's right. People, the, the jackass quotient was way up this weekend <laughs> for people. People were, were really acting like jackass, yeah. jackasses this weekend. What'd they do? Well, I'm at the football game, and, uh, you know, some photographers and stuff started taking pictures, and I said, eh, you know, be cool on that, and they were cool. Everything was going good, and, yeah. and there were a couple of fans there, and then my whole family was there, my parents, my sister, and it was real cool. One of the Hofstra cheerleaders came over and did a personal cheer for me, even though I was sitting on the <laughs> Buffalo, uh, you know, line. Buffalo so. yeah. yeah, but it was a little embarrassing, but okay, hey, it was pretty cool. My my parents were going, hey, he's a pretty big star. The Buffalo uh, cheerleaders are coming over, and... Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, the Hofstra cheerleaders are coming over and doing a little cheer just for me. Right. Howard, I'll come to New York and do a cheer for you. <laughs> no, you don't do... You know, you're a tease. I had you alone in a hotel room. Hey, you did no, nothing. Robin, explain to the people what we're really talking about. I should have given her some you, wine. You are such a talker. Yeah. A little it. wine. Well, Jessica, you know what he's always said. You would have to attack him, and that would be before he ran out of the room. Yeah, right. I bet you <laughs> Sam gave you wine. Wine has nothing to do with it. Tell me about the first time Sam made love to you. Let's hear it. Let's be honest for once. What if my mother is listening to this? So what? She know, you're a big girl. She, I mean, she saw you naked in Playboy, for God's oh, sake. Oh, <laughs> She sees what you so got. Happy. Listen, there's nothing, Listen, your mother makes love. Yeah, okay. Huh? Let's not talk about my mother, please. What do you do when uh, people come up to you and say your new boyfriend Sam looks like Humpty Dumpty? Oh, stop. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Howard. Do you defend him and stuff? Howard. <laughs> Howard, you know you really well, Let's get back to Hofstra and Buffalo. Yeah, let's get back to the cheerleaders. All right. <laughs> now, what no, happened? No, but Jessica, so, really, you... tell me about that. How did he seduce you? Tell me. Howard. I want to know. Howard. Why? Why can't I have a scoop? I just g gave you five. You gave me nothing. I did so. Nothing. What are you talking about? You didn't give me a scoop. Instead, she talked to the Inquirer first. I was really Yeah, that was nice. Uh, the Inquirer did. We get you a boyfriend, and you talk to the Inquirer. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm not kidding. You're crazy. How, um, what's his name? Sam, he's, what, what do you want to know? I want to know just how he seduced you. Where was it? Where were you guys the first time you realized you wanted to be lovers? Oh, God. I mean, when did it happen? Well, it wasn't that first night. Oh, Lord. It wasn't the night at the comedy club, because you no, were saying Robin, Sam looked had, like a gnome. Wait, he had his eyes on Robin mm. the night at the comedy club, okay? But, what happens when he touches those incredible Teflon breasts of yours? Oh, God. Oh, man, I wish I was in the room. Nothing sticks, Howard. All nothing, I know, sticks. nothing sticks. All I know is I, I want... All I know is I want to... Uh, I wanted her that that day that we were in the hotel room in Los Angeles, me yeah. and Jessica alone. I yeah. wanted Jessica to just come over and say, Howard, I must have you now. Just rip <laughs> off her clothes and attack me. You would have ran out of the room. I would not have because you, you would have. have smothered me. Get out. You would have, was, you would have tackled me. See, it had to be like a football game. He wanted you to tackle Are you kidding? Me. You could have at least massaged me a little bit. <laughs> Are you kidding? He was like, Robin, you were like calling Robin while we were in the room. I mean, I was on no, the I was. No, I didn't want Robin, because I went into a room alone with, you know, you in hotel rooms. <laughs> oh. He's banging on the wall. Robin, are you there? Yeah. <laughs> That's the, and I left all the doors open. <laughs> the windows. But, I mean, you know, I'm a married man. I can't seduce you. All right. You have to, like, seduce me. And all of a sudden, like, your top just falls off. Oh, God, yes. And those lovely breasts are exposed. Howard, I love you. I love you. I really do. No, I love you more. I love you more. Well, prove it. <laughs> what? Prove it. How? Hmm. But now that you made love to Sam, I don't know that I want oh, you. Oh, stop it now. I didn't. You, you guys, I'm just letting you talk, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, okay, so how did Sam do it? I mean, how did he seduce you? Tell me. Just give me that scoop. You guys were alone where? Tell me where you were. His place? God in heaven. Your place? Howard. What? Howard. And I like when you call me God in heaven. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it really Where'd appeals to my nickname? ego. I didn't know about that. Oh, I've got many nicknames. <laughs> that he, he Cousin got Howie, that. God in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Several <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> I gave him that name in the hotel room. <laughs> hmm. No, uh, you know, it, Sam just makes me laugh just like you do, Howard. Mm. Really? Mm. Mm. Howard, I love you. Gary, tell all of Washington, oh, this will be good, about Jessica's hooter popping out in California. Oh, oh, I, no. I thought you saw it and I didn't see it. I thought you never asked, boss. Mm. <laughs> See, we had a, I had a cut-off T-shirt, cut-off K-Rock T-shirt, and Jessica asked if she could have a T-shirt, except I didn't remember that it was cut off. Right. I re But I really did. Yeah. So, right. I, so we were all in my hotel room, you and Robin and Jessica and Jackie and Fred and myself and Scott and right. from, lots of people. And, um, and Jessica put on the T-shirt, and she didn't have a bra. And she came walking out of the bathroom, and she and she held her arms up, you know, like an airplane, and said, "How does this look?" And then her, one of her beautiful breasts fell out, and they were beautiful, Jessica. It fell out the right hand side, right. and all the guys fell off the couch. Right, and I missed it because I wasn't sitting where, and you, I've never even seen them in person. Oh, really? Everybody's seen them except me. Even Gary saw your incredible breasts. 
That's because you were like, your head was in business. You were sitting there taking care. I mean, I mean, Gary had 90,000 shirts. He gives me the one with the cut-off arms. <laughs> and and they were cut off down to the waist. Yeah. Right. And, of course, Jessica walks out of the bathroom, and she doesn't care. because I mean, like, Jessica didn't know it was cut off. Howard, I didn't know. I <laughs> slipped it on because I didn't want to miss what you guys were talking about. <laughs> we were talking about your incredible breasts. <laughs> That's pretty much what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. anyway, and your dress that didn't fit you. What dress? The one that was like the mini skirt that was three times too oh, short. Oh, geez. here we go again. It, it was a hundred degrees out. Everybody else was in bikinis. I was in a mini. Skirt. All I know is you sat down. You were winking at me. <laughs> I was not. You were. Howard, I just came from the Playboy Mansion. We had a big party, and I had that outfit on for that. When? You, just, you know, you're bad. Oh, you went to a party with Sam? No, no. I remember when you were. So in when LA. did when did Sam? What? How did Sam seduce you? I just want to know where were you? Can I know where you were? Howard. Where were you? Howard. Were you at his place? Howard. You never tell me anything. We know you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like you, you and I are You've admitted in the paper to being lovers. Why can't we talk I about it? I did not admit it. It's like you and I are sitting alone at a kitchen table. Only Washington and New York. And Philadelphia. No, I turned that off. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, come on, tell me. What happened? Sure. Washington. Just tell me where you were, at least. Can Howard. I have that scoop? What? Tell me where you were. Just, Howard, please don't. All right. Thank you, Jessica. Howard. Thank you. Howard. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> was it on the airplane? Oh my god! I'm not. I'm not. Yet. So, Robin, what? What oh. up to? Robin, how's um? What's his name? What is the big deal about saying the where you made love? Gums. What's his name? Arsenio. Arsenio? <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with saying where you made love for the first time? Is that wrong? Is that a bad thing? I don't know, Howard. Like, uh... Maybe Jessica has more than one bull when she doesn't oh, want to Oh, okay. So she has several boyfriends. Okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah, like, I have time. <laughs> yeah, it's so demanding being the... What is I'm it? The prize the... girl on a radio station. Hey, Howard. Yeah. Stop that. No, I'm a little Hey, what happened to that TV we were supposed to send out? <laughs> she won't send it to us. Oh, I have a really good one. I... She's embarrassed by her work. No, oh. I'm not. I'm getting really good. I love it. All right, listen, I gotta go. Yeah, right. I so you don't want to talk. I'll tell you later. No, I don't want to know now. Howard, no. All right, God, well, I love it. these private conversations we have. Was it in his hotel room? <sighs> anyway, Howard, I love you. All right. All right, Jessica. Have a good morning. You guys. All right. Don't be mad now. It's going to ruin my day. What about in Phoenix? Are you studying the ceilings or... Uh... Am I <laughs> What is that? Have you been making a study of the ceilings in Phoenix? That. You know what I mean. I'm oh. afraid. Have you been with any guys from Phoenix? <laughs> any of those zookeepers? Howard, I'm in bed by 8 o'clock. <laughs> All right. It's the zookeepers. No. All right, Jessica. Thanks for calling in and welcoming us into Washington. Oh. All right. I love you. I love you guys, too. <laughs> what guys? There's only one of me here. Oh, that's right. That's your line. Right. I love you, too. <laughs> I love you guys, too. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Jessica Hahn, ladies and gentlemen, Bye. checking in. <laughs> Star of the new Sam Kinison video. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Star of Sam Kennison's life, maybe. We don't <laughs> I went over Hofstra. And yeah. then, so then the cheerleaders started doing a little cheer for me, one of the cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. And then, as I'm getting up to leave with my sister and everything, and my cousins are all there, some guy yells out, Hey, Howard, man, you're ugly. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was real bad. That made me look real bad. You know, you're with your family. Well, how why do people take such delight in doing that? What do they? And what does that do for them? Is he like there with a girl trying to impress her with how he can put you down? Hey, Howard, you're ugly. Yeah, because you're not on the radio. You don't have your microphone in front of you. Yeah, it's their way of like showing off to their girlfriends yeah. to make up for their small penises. Hey, watch but, this. Hmm. He's not so hot. I can get him. Yeah. Oh, watch. Let's see how big he is off the air. It's like a, being a gunslinger, and every guy in town wants to go after yeah. you. Oh, yeah. I was walking through, uh, let's see, Saturday night, I took my wife out to dinner, and I was walking through Great Neck. We decided to walk around, mm -hmm. and some guy, some jerk, comes up to me and goes, Howard, uh, do me a favor. Would you just, uh, my wife is over there looking in that window. She doesn't believe I spotted you. Just go up to her and say, hey, Mary, I don't believe that, uh, you know, I don't believe you're here. I just want to say hi. It's Howard Stern. They give you a script. So I go, yeah, a script. What to say to his wife, some oh, jerk. Dear. So I just said to him, uh, no way. I said, I'm not doing that. And he was like, what? I said, I'm not doing it. Goodbye. And then I just walked away. And then he was like thinking I was a jerk. And I was like, you know, I'm the nervous guy thinking like, you know. And rude. Yeah, he has the right to come up and just to command you to do something. Yeah, what a real dick. I can't believe the the, the nerve of the guy. Yeah. So the jackass...
potential was there. The jackass quotient. Yeah. We hit the jackass quotient. Hmm. And then the cheerleaders started in 2468, let's watch Howard masturbate. Oh. And all different kinds of weird cheers that embarrassed me in front of my family. When they spelled it out at halftime, though. Yeah, it was, it was scary. You know, when the band got into that formation. But those uh, college girls look so good, man. Oh, man, what I could do to them. Now I know what, what I could do. What you could do is tutor them, give them some advice. <laughs> no, what I could do to them would be incredible because I'm going to tell you something, Robin. What? Now that I'm 34, I realize I played my life the whole wrong way. Oh, boy. I've made some mistakes. You just, you know, I was looking at some pictures yeah. uh, of uh, a gathering we were at not too long ago, and uh, your lovely, beautiful wife was in these pictures. She looks absolutely mm. gorgeous. Yes. Well. And you have the nerve to sit here pining about who you can't have. Pining? I haven't even, I haven't touched her, my wife, in two weeks. Uh. I haven't even touched her. I haven't even looked at her. I just haven't even been interested in two weeks. What? I mean, well, you know, it's just I've had her. I've been there. <laughs> She's pretty. Pretty, yes. A spring chicken, no. Oh. All right. All right, you got to live there. I don't. <laughs> She's a pretty 34-year-old woman. You. The uh, Hoster cheerleading squad did this, like, cheer. Uh -huh. And, of course, they faced the Hoster side. I was on the Buffalo side. Yeah. And then the cheerleaders do this, um, like, go, rah, 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 whatever the hell they this say. Who can hear rah. them? Yeah, you know. <laughs> and then they do, like, a... A spread? What do you call those when you... Oh, the kick? Where oh, they no, a split. Yeah. And like, right. a split, the kind of split where you stick to the floor. Oh, no. And I mean, this was some split. And you can see their underpants and everything. That's um, those little panties that go with their little skirts. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something, Robin. There was unbelievable. In fact, they did that split the grass dive. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> the kind of split the grass dive. Oh, I'm not kidding. Oh, oh, man. I couldn't take it. I tell you. Oh, oh man! I've never <laughs> heard of I killed the grass. <laughs> like seventeen <laughs> dead spots on the on the grass. But they look pretty good. A lot of dummies go to that school, but a lot of good-looking women. A lot of dumb, good-looking women at Hofstra. <laughs> I got to tell you, women who know how to do splits. You're not kidding. <laughs> oh God, I was dying inside. I was dying. dying were you? I was, I was screaming for the cheerleaders. Now, I made a total you, fool of myself. How did you live your life all wrong? I mean, what revelation did you come to that you had made such mistakes? There are a lot of girls, and I wish these girls would call into the show. Girls I've made love to. Girls before I got married I made love to. that, I, And I did so badly because I used to rush through it, and I used to be nervous during it, and I didn't even concentrate on it. I was so young and so naive that I didn't even do it well for them. And I wish these women would call in. I'd like to apologize. There's one in particular, this Amy. She was a babysitter. Upstate at summer camp. Uh-huh. I worked in the kitchen. She was a babysitter. And I totally ignored her for the whole summer. Excuse me, I might have been a counselor or something. Yeah, you might have been upgraded. Yeah. <laughs> and she was hot for me. And I, I, but lately, I've been, last night, I... You thought about her? I thought about her. I had sex with her. She didn't know <laughs> it, but I did. And I was thinking about how firm she was. And how I missed out on everything. And how I just rushed through it and hardly even had her. And then I just threw her aside and didn't want her again. I was nervous, and I just I just blew it. I blew my whole life. <laughs> I, I don't know what I did. It's over. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> it's over. Of course, right now, she's probably about 33 years old and as loose as my wife. So. That's why you want to see right. her. I, want to, I just want to get that out of you my system. You want to stop aching for her uh, right. flesh. Well, see, she's probably had like nine children. <laughs> I'm imagining her back, but she... And this was the girl who would lay on her back, and she was so firm that nothing sagged. Nothing. Mm. Gravity had not taken its toll. Gravity had not taken its toll. <laughs> what a miserable life I've had. Well, anyway. See the here near there. We're happy today because we're back on in Washington. That's right. Gary, go assemble some of our best song parodies to play for Washington. When we come back, we'll do the news. And then after the news, we'll we'll give Washington an education as to what we've been up to. And we'll take phone calls. And it'll be a celebration. And we'll call the mayor of Washington and, and ask for a parade. All right. You know, we'll recreate that old bit. Get me the number for the mayor of Washington. Okay. And uh, we'll be back right after these words. 94 WISP, where the Monday midday show awaits you right after Howard. I've seen what they've done to you and your family. I don't want, I don't know that I want to be their son. See, yeah. see, all right. 
Although my parents, I don't know, that's no prize. No, I love my parents. Your parents are great. They're very nice people. That. Your parents aren't. No. They are not great, you're right. Hey, listen, Jackie, don't make faces. Robin told me about them. I think they're not so great. <laughs> Sounds weird. He's getting upset for you, Robin. No, he's getting upset for my parents, which is upsetting me. Feels really let me just say, it feels really good to be in Washington because I've waited a long time to kick the ass of DC 101. I mean, yeah. just, just kick them where it hurts, man. You know, it irked us for all this time that there was nothing we could do about it. We couldn't get to you. You... You scum. Yes. <laughs> and it's not that I... That guy Grease Man, Doug Trachtenberg... It's not that I even care about him so much. I mean, I really don't even know that guy, except he had a couple of nasty things to say about me in the newspaper. Yeah. Even though he took over an audience that I built up to an eight share, and he's only equaled maybe a five or a four share. No, he completely lost that audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, he completely lost the audience. And then I guess Washington finally, after, what happened is when we left Washington, Washington was so fed up with that jerky station, it went way down the tubes. They lost all their advertisers. They lost everything. And they gave this guy Grease Moron all my money. Mm -hmm. Everybody's money. They gave me everybody's money. Yeah. Doug Trachtenberg. <laughs> gave my money your gave money. Gave him your money, my money. Fred didn't have any money, so. <laughs> uh, I think Goff was paying him a big 16 grand a year. Yeah. And and made him come in on weekends for that. Yeah. <laughs> you got to come in on weekends, Fred? Oh, yeah. What was that all about? No, oh, that's the only way I could make it. Oh, you had to do an air shift. Yeah, you had right. to do an air shift on yeah. Saturday. Yeah. That was good. So, anyway... Uh, the thing is, that guy, Doug Trachtenberg, when he, when he took over and stuff, I didn't really care. I mean, I thought it was funny that the whole station went down the tubes and it was poetic justice. But after a year of us not being there, Washington kind of forgot and said, hey, look, we got to listen to the radio. Well, they were starved. Yeah. And they were pretty loyal to us. I mean, they starved for a year. And then they went back to listening to that, that idiot. And the thing that bothered me the most about it was that the general manager who fired us there, was, who was the worst general manager in the country, was the fact that he was still making a lot of money. He's still making a half a million dollars a year. Still to this day. And if there's any way that we can destroy that radio station, I will do it. And what's the number in Washington that they can call in? 1-800-something-stern. 1-800-44-stern. That'll be the new number in Washington. I heard that's the number they can call in Philly now. 1-800-44-STERN. Really? That's what I heard, but I wish Gary would get me that information. <laughs> <laughs> and in New York, it's the same number as always. What whatever is that is. 955 Right, 212. we got too many numbers. 955 I wonder if we should start the news or take a phone call from Washington. I'm kind of curious to see what's going on there. Well, let's point down another uh, caller there. Gary, you have uh, phone information for That's us? Exactly what you said is correct. So Philly is 1-844-STERN. Washington is 1-844-STERN. One number for everyone. And in New York... It's still 955-9292. Uh, and you so know what? one number for everyone. Yeah, and make a note. <laughs> <laughs> is that what he said? He said one number for everyone. Oh. All right. So anyway... <laughs> no, Gary, you are stupid. <laughs> but anyway, the point is... And as bright as you think you are, you're not. Gary thinks he's really intelligent. <laughs> but you went to Adelphi. You couldn't be that intelligent. Oh, come on. He went there because he didn't want to leave home, Howard. Yeah, oh. I could have gone. I was accepted to University of Texas. I was accepted to Rochester Institute of Technology. Rochester Institute <laughs> of Technology. <laughs> that is, that is a, the, 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 That's for morons. You're out of your mind. That is I know the, lots of guys who went there. In the country. But see what that is? That's BOCES. That is not That's BOCES. college BOCES. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody who wants to go to Rochester Institute of Technology could go. Bar none. They bar no one. That is a great school. There are people who fly in from Haiti just to go to college there. <laughs> Rochester Institute of Technology. You're going to tell me. I know guys who are dyslexic. They've been, they've been tested retarded. And they get into Rochester Institute of Technology. You know what you need to get in? Pubic hair. <laughs> That's the big requirement. <laughs> Hang on. You have pubic hair? Yes. <laughs> You're in. Rochester Institute of Technology. Gary's using that as an example. It's a very good school. Oh, that is the worst. You know what you go you know what you do when you graduate there? What? You go into printing. No, you know that is No, printer. you go into printing. That's it? What do you think what kind of school do you think that is? It happens is? to be one of the best photography schools in the country. You pick up the New York Times on Photography schools. You pick schools. up the New York Times on any Sunday and you'll see some of the photography jobs that'll say RIT graduates only. It's one of the best photography schools in the country. No, 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 no. They print 
photographs. It's a printing thing. Like, you can learn how to be the guy in the dark room who prints out this stuff. Well, it is more technical. It's a technical it school. Artistic, but it's not... I know people who read books and learn that on their own. My brother-in-law <laughs> graduated from there. Oh, he did? Yeah. No other school wanted him. <laughs> what uh -oh. is this, Scott? I have to clarify the phone numbers. All right, go oh, ahead. Boy. For, for now, Washington is 1-800-44-STERN. Go ahead. Philadelphia is the same as they had, 922 Rock, I think it was. Yeah. 922 yeah. Rock until about six weeks until they converted over. Uh, so all, all right. of your information was very, very good, Gary. Good. <laughs> I only, I, that's what they told <laughs> no, me. No, they had told me that too. Yeah. All right, now, Scott, let's get this straight. In Washington, you call 1-800-44-STERN. Correct. In, <laughs> in New York, you dial 9... No, 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 922. <laughs> in New York, 955-9292. In Philadelphia, 1-800-922-ROCK. Oh, okay. I'm going to make up a little sheet for you. Yeah, you better make up a sheet because I'm confused. Rochester Institute of Technology. All right, well, I was accepted to eight different schools, though. You know, and they make it sound like Institute of Technology, like it's that one in Michigan, MIT, yeah. it's like Michigan Institute. Right. It's like, oh, that's the one in Rochester. Yeah, everybody will be confused. Yeah. He was accepted to eight different schools. Yes, well, there was a proliferation of colleges. They have to have students. I know a couple of guys who went there. <laughs> My brother-in-law went there, and now I don't even know what he does. He's like in the computer business, but... I'm not sure what he does. Which brother-in-law? Louie. Oh, okay. All right. So he's a smart guy. <laughs> then, there's a... Uh, he's got street smarts. <laughs> All right. He's good at knowing which restaurant to go to. In London. In London. <laughs> Very street smart. He's like a travel log. Oh, yeah, he's okay. He's, he's a bright kid, but he wasn't, he, he wasn't what you'd call a student. All right? Then there's this other guy I know from my high school, this guy Matthew, mm -hmm. who became a printer. A printing press from that. <laughs> and then he got a better job and stuff. But he got out of school. He was a printer. You can think it's like print shop. It's glorified print shop. Yeah. R.I.T. The only difference is it's college. So people, little, they act a little more professionally. Like they don't steal your lunch <laughs> and stuff. You know what I mean? And they don't throw blocks at your head. Print right. blocks at your head. Hey. Hey. Washington line has a little hum on it. Yeah, sure does. Howard Stern. Yeah. Is he in? This is it. You're on the air. I'm on the air. Yep. I'm calling from D.C. I'm an ex-Grease fan. All right. Already. 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 Already you've given up. Already. Yeah, because the guy's not funny. <laughs> How long has it been since you've been here? A year? It's been five years, my friend. Five years. Five. I was in New York over the weekend. Five years I've waited to be back on in Washington, and it feels good. Thanks for the call. Okay. What a bore. He has, nothing to say. Yeah, he has nothing to say except he likes us. He's he an ex Grease fan, yeah. so that's fine. Yeah. We'll yeah. take him. Yeah. <laughs> so, what am I supposed to do? Sodomize him because he's an ex Grease fan? I mean, he was waiting for me to, like, you yeah. know. Praise him. Yeah. All right, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, how you doing? All right, man. It's been a long time. Caller okay. from Washington. Great to speak to you. Okay, I was wondering what you thought of a city that would keep reelecting the same mayor. We still have the same mayor from the time you left, and he's even gotten worse from the time you've been here. Well, because... Uh, he wouldn't even give you a parade. We're the only city left with a white mayor. Our black people haven't gotten total control of the city yet. But, uh, no, what's going on is that Washington is mostly black, and they're loyal to their man. Yeah. It's not, you know, let's face it, right? Well, couldn't they find they another find black man? No, they've been searching. They can't oh, find one. Oh, I see. Okay. No, but it's just they're very loyal to their, you know, to their black man. <laughs> 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 to their own black guy. It's sort of like here with, um, who's the guy who just went to jail, the Italian guy in, in the Bronx? Oh, uh, Mario Biaggi. Isn't he going to jail? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, so he's crooked, but he's Italian and everyone in the Bronx was Italian, so they kept electing him. Hey, it's well, just, uh, it's reason. ethnic pride. It's... That's all. Okay, well, uh, so Greece has taken away your audience here. It's up to you to take it back. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm having nightmares about it. Yeah, I bet all you right. are. Thank you, man. Okay, good luck. The Grease. What is that all about? The Grease. <laughs> the Grease. Doug Trachtenberg. I predict that the Grease, Grease's life will fall apart within six months. When people run through Washington and ask him, how's Howard every five minutes? Yeah.